The Defence Research and Development Organisation (DRDO) is an agency of the Republic of India, charged with the military's research and development, headquartered in New Delhi, India. It was formed in 1958 by the merger of the Technical Development Establishment and the Directorate of Technical Development and Production with the Defence Science Organisation. It is under the administrative control of the Ministry of Defence, Government of India. With a network of 52 laboratories, which are engaged in developing defense technologies covering various fields, like aeronautics, armaments, electronics, land combat engineering, life sciences, materials, missiles, and naval systems, DRDO is India's largest and most diverse research organization. The organization includes around 5,000 scientists belonging to the Defense Research and Development Service and about 25,000 other scientific, technical and supporting personnel. History The DRDO was established in 1958 by amalgamating the Defence Science Organisation and some of the technical development establishments. A separate Department of Defence Research and Development was formed in 1980 which later on administered DRDO and its 50 laboratories, establishments. Most of the time the Defence Research Development Organisation was treated as if it was a vendor and the Army Headquarters or the Air Headquarters were the customers. Because the Army and the Air Force themselves did not have any design or construction responsibility, they tended to treat the designer or Indian industry at par with their corresponding designer in the world market. If they could get a MiG-21 from the world market, they wanted a MiG-21 from DRDO. DRDO started its first major project in surface-to-air missiles SAM, known as Project Indigo in 1960s. Indigo was discontinued in later years without achieving full success. Project Indigo led to Project Devil, along with Project Valiant, to develop short-range SAM and ICBM in the 1970s. Project Devil itself led to the later development of the Prithvi missile under the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program in the 1980s. IGMDP was an Indian Ministry of Defence program between the early 1980s and 2007 for the development of a comprehensive range of missiles, including the Agni missile, Prithvi ballistic missile, Akash missile, Trishal missile and Nag missile. In 2010, then Defence Minister A.K. Antony ordered the restructuring of the DRDO to give a major boost to defence research in the country and to ensure effective participation of the private sector in defence technology. The key measures to make DRDO effective in its functioning include the establishment of a Defence Technology Commission with the Defence Minister as its chairman. The programmes which were largely managed by DRDO have seen considerable success with many of the systems seeing rapid deployment as well as yielding significant technological benefits. DRDO has achieved many successes since its establishment in developing other major systems and critical technologies such as aircraft avionics, UAVs, small arms, artillery systems, EU systems, tanks and armoured vehicles, sonar systems, command and control systems and missile systems. Organization Cluster laboratories, establishments HR institutions Other institutions Centers of excellence Topic Projects Topic Aeronautics The DRDO is responsible for the ongoing light combat aircraft. The LCA is intended to provide the Indian Air Force with a modern, fly-by-wire, multi-role fighter, as well as develop the aviation industry in India. The LCA program has allowed DRDO to progress substantially in the fields of avionics, flight control systems, aircraft propulsion and composite structures, along with aircraft design and development. 
the DRDO provided key avionics for the Suhoi Su-30 MKI program under the Vetrival program. Systems developed by DRDO include radar warning receivers, radar and display computers. DRDO's radar computers, manufactured by HAL are also being fitted into Malaysian Su-30s. The DRDO is part of the Indian Air Force's upgrade programs for its MiG-27 and Seepcat Jaguar combat aircraft, along with the manufacturer Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. DRDO and HAL have been responsible for the system design and integration of these upgrades, which combine indigenously developed systems along with imported ones. DRDO contributed subsystems like the Terang radar warning receiver, Tempest jammer, core avionics computers, brake parachutes, cockpit instrumentation and displays. HAL AMCA, Aeronautical Development Agency of DRDO is responsible for the design and development of the fifth generation aircraft. In 2015, 700 ADA employees were working on the project along with 2,000 employees of DRDO. Avatar spacecraft. Other Hindustan aeronautics programs Apart from the aforementioned upgrades, DRDO has also assisted Hindustan aeronautics with its programs. These include the HAL Dhruv helicopter and the HAL HJT-36. Over a hundred LRU line replaceable unit S in the HJT-36 have come directly from the LCA program. Other duties have included assisting the Indian Air Force with indigenization of spares and equipment. These include both mandatory as well as other items. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Unmanned aerial vehicles. The DRDO has also developed two unmanned aerial vehicles, the Nishant Tactical UAV and the Lakshya Target Pilotless Target Aircraft PTA. The Lakshya PTA has been ordered by all three services for their gunnery target training requirements. Efforts are on to develop the PTA further, with an improved all-digital flight control system, and a better turbojet engine. The Nishant is a hydraulically launched short-ranged UAV for the tactical battle area. It is currently being evaluated by the Indian Navy and the Indian paramilitary forces as well. The DRDO is also going ahead with its plans to develop a new class of UAVs. These draw upon the experience gained via the Nishant program, and will be substantially more capable. Referred to by the HAIL high altitude long endurance and MAIL medium altitude long endurance designations. The MAIL UAV has been tentatively named the Rustam, and will feature canards and carry a range of payloads, including optronic, radar, laser designators and ESM. The UAV will have conventional landing and takeoff capability. The Hale UAV will have features such as SATCOM links, allowing it to be commanded beyond line of sight. Other tentative plans speak of converting the LCA into a UCAV, unmanned combat aerial vehicle, and weaponizing UAVs. DRDO Abyas, DRDO Aura, DRDO Fluffy, DRDO Imperial Eagle. DRDO Kapothaka DRDO Lakshya DRDO Netra DRDO Nishant Pawan UAV DRDO Rustam DRDO Ulka Topic <inaudible> Indigenization efforts DRDO has been responsible for the indigenization of key defense stores and equipment. DRDO has assisted Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and the IAF with the indigenization of spares and assemblies for several aircraft. DRDO laboratories have worked in coordination with academic institutes, the CSIR and even ISRO over projects required for the Indian Air Force and its sister services. DRDO's infrastructure is also utilized by other research organizations in India. In the first ever initiative of its kind, DRDO has provided its patented copper titanium Kudi alloy technology for commercial exploitation to a startup company. The agreement between DRDO and Pawa Metal Tech Private Limited was signed on the sidelines of the Startup India event at Delhi. Topic Armaments 
DRDO cooperates with the state-owned Ordnance Factories Board for producing its items. These have led to issues of marginal quality control for some items, and time-consuming rectification. Whilst these are common to the introduction of most new weapons systems, the OFB has had issues with maintaining the requisite schedule and quality of manufacture owing to their own structural problems and lack of modernization. The DRDO has played a vital role in the development of this ability since the role of private organizations in the development of small arms and similar items has been limited. A significant point in case is the INSAS rifle which has been adopted by the Indian Army as its standard battle rifle and is in extensive service. There have been issues with rifle quality in use under extreme conditions in the heat, with the OFB stating that it will rectify these troubles with higher grade material and strengthening the unit. Prior troubles were also dealt with in a similar manner. In the meantime, the rifle has found favor throughout the army and has been ordered in number by other paramilitary units and police forces. In recent years, India's booming economy has allowed the OFB to modernize with more state funding coming its way, to the tune of $400 million invested during 2002 07. The organization hopes that this will allow it to modernize its infrastructure. It has also begun introducing new items, including a variant of the AK 47 and reverse engineered versions of the Donnell 1420 of a millimeter anti material rifles. The DRDO's various projects are <laughs> Small arms the INSAS weapon system has become the standard battle rifle for the Indian Army and paramilitary units. Bulk production of a LMG variant commenced in 1998. It has since been selected as the standard assault rifle of the Royal Army of Oman. In 2010, DRDO completed the development of oleo resin plastic hand grenades as a less lethal way to control rioters, better tear gas shells and short-range laser dazzlers. Topic: Explosives. Topic: <laughs> Chemical Kit for Detection of Explosives (CKDE). A compact, low-cost, and handy explosive detection kit has been designed and perfected for field detection of traces of explosives. The kit yields a color reaction based on which explosives can be detected in minutes. It is used for identification of all common military, civil and homemade explosive compositions, and is being used by police and BSF for the detection of explosives. <laughs> <laughs> explosive Detection Kit EDK. In what has been termed a reverse technology transfer. The explosive detection kit widely used in India by bomb detection squads and the armed forces since 2002, would be manufactured and sold in the US. The kit uses reagents to detect various chemicals present in explosives. <laughs> Indian CL-20 explosive A new high explosive is in the making at a DRDO lab that could replace other standard explosives of the armed forces such as RDX, HMX, FOX-7 and amorphous boron. Scientists at the Pune-based High Energy Materials Research Laboratory have already synthesized an adequate quantity of CL-20, the new explosive, in their laboratory. The compound, Indian CL-20 or ICL-20, was indigenously developed in HEMRL using inverse technology. CL-20 is a nitramine class of explosive 15 times as powerful as HMX. HMX itself is more than four times as potent as RDX. CL-20-based shaped charges significantly improve the penetration of armor and could potentially be used in the bomb for the 120M main gun mounted on the MBT Arjun tanks. The CL-20, due to its reduced sensitivity enables easy handling and transportation and reduces the chances of mishap and loss to men, money, materials and machines. <laughs> <laughs> Artillery systems and ammunition Panaka multi-barrel rocket launcher, this system has seen significant success. This system saw the DRDO cooperate extensively with the privately owned industrial sector in India. 
As of 2016, the Panaka Mk-1 system, with rockets of up to 40 km striking distance, has been successfully inducted in the Indian Army, with two regiments in service and another two on order. The Panaka Mk-2 program with rockets of up to 60 km in range, has cleared trials and has been recommended for induction as well. A new long-range tactical rocket system, referred to as the Prahar with the name meaning strike in Hindi program, while an exportable derivative was named as the Pragati progress in Hindi and displayed in a South Korean arms fair. The DRDO's project has seen trials around fielding a long-range tactical strike system, moving on from the successful Panaka project. The aim is to develop a long-range system able to strike at a range of 100 to 120 km, with each rocket in the system, having a payload of up to 250 kg. The new MBRS's rocket will have a maximum speed of 4.7 Mach and will rise to an altitude of 40 km, before hitting its target at 1.8 Mach. There is also a move to put a sophisticated new inertial guidance system on the rockets whilst keeping cost constraints in mind. The DRDO has evaluated the EMEA LISRA developed trajectory control system and its technology, for use with the Panaka, and a further development of the system could presumably be used with the new MBRL as well. DRDO's ARD developed 81mm and the, 120mm illuminating bombs and 105mm illuminating shells for the Indian Army's infantry and artillery. A 51mm lightweight infantry platoon mortar for the Indian Army. A man portable weapon, the 51mm mortar achieves double the range of 2-inch mortar without any increase in weight. Its new HE bomb uses pre-fragmentation technology to achieve improved lethality. Besides HE, a family of ammunition consisting of smoke, illuminating and practice bombs has also been developed. The weapon system is under production at ordnance factories. Proximity fuses for missiles and artillery shells. Proximity fuses are used with artillery shells for air bursts against entrenched troops and in anti-aircraft and anti-missile roles as well. Training devices, these include a mortar training device for the 81mm mortar used by the infantry, a mortar training device for the 120mm mortar used by the artillery, and a 0.50-inch sub-caliber training device for 105mm Vijayanta tank gun. The Indian Field Gun, a 105mm field gun was developed for the Indian Army and is in production. This was a significant challenge for the OFB, and various issues were faced with its manufacture including reliability issues and metallurgical problems. These were rectified over time. Submerged Signal Ejector Cartridges SSE, Limpet Mines, Short Range Anti-Submarine Rockets with HE and Practice Warheads, the Indian Sea Mine which can be deployed against both ships and submarines. The DRDO also designed short and medium range ECM rockets which deploy chaff to decoy away anti ship homing missiles. In a similar vein, they also developed a 3 in mm PFHE shell, pre fragmented and with a proximity fuse, for use against anti ship missiles and other targets, by the Navy. All these items are in production. For the Indian Air Force, DRDO has developed retarder tail units and fuse systems for the 450 kg bomb used by strike aircraft, 68 mm arrow rockets he, practice and heat for rocket pods used in air to ground and even air to air if need be, a 450 kg high speed, low drag HSLD bomb and practice bombs which mimic different projectiles with the addition of suitable drag plates and escape aid cartridges for Air Force aircraft. All these items are in production. Topic: Tank armament. DRDO's ARD also developed other critical systems, such as the Arjun main battle tank's 120 mm rifled main gun, and is presently engaged in the development of the armament for the future IFV, the Abhe. The DRDO is also a member of the trials teams for the T-72 upgrade and its fire control systems. Earlier on, the DRDO also upgraded the Vijayanta medium tank with new fire control computers. Electronics and computer sciences Electronic warfare 
ECM stations for both communication and non-com systems. The Indian Army has ordered its Signal Corps to be a prime contributor in the design and development stage, along with the DRDO's DLRL. The scale of this venture is substantial, it comprises COMINT and electronic intelligence stations which can monitor and jam different bands for both voice, data as well as radar transmissions. In contrast to other such systems, Samyukta is an integrated system, which can perform the most critical battlefield EU tasks in both COM and non-COM roles. The system will be the first of its type in terms of its magnitude and capability in the Army. Its individual modules can also be operated independently. A follow-on system known as Sauherd is under development. The Safari IED suppression system for the Army and paramilitary forces and the Sujav ESM system meant for high accuracy direction finding and jamming of communication transceivers. Topic EU systems for the Air Force radar warning receivers for the Indian Air Force of the Terang series. These have been selected to upgrade most of the Indian Air Force's aircraft such as for the MiG-21, MiG-29, Su-30 MKI, MiG-27 and Jaguar as well as self-protection upgrades for the transport fleet. The Tranquil RWR for MiG-23s superseded by the Terang project and the Tempest jamming system for the Air Force's MiGs. The latest variant of the Tempest jamming system is capable of noise, barrage, as well as deception jamming as it makes use of DRFM. The DRDO has also developed a High Accuracy Direction Finding System HADF for the Indian Air Force's Su-30 MKIs which are fitted in the modular Shiva pod capable of supersonic carriage. This HADF pod is meant to cue KH-31 anti-radiation missiles used by the Su-30 MKI for seed. DRDO stated in 2009 that its latest radar warning receiver for the Indian Air Force, the R-118, had gone into production. The R-118 can also fuse data from different sensors such as the aircraft radar, missile, laser warning systems and present the unified data on a multi-function display. The DRDO also noted that its new radar warner jammer systems RWJ were at an advanced stage of development and would be submitted for trials. The RWJ is capable of detecting all foreseen threats and jamming multiple targets simultaneously. Other EU projects revealed by the DRDO include the MAS project a joint venture by the DRDO and EADS which leverages EADS hardware and DRDO software to develop MAS systems for transport, helicopter and fighter fleets. DRDO also has laser warning systems available. A DIRCM directed infrared countermeasures project to field a world-class DIRCM system intended to protect aircraft from infrared guided weapons. The DRDO is also developing an all-new ESM project in cooperation with the Indian Air Force's Signals Intelligence Directorate, under the name of Divya Drishti Divine Sight. Divya Drishti will field a range of static as well as mobile ESM stations that can fingerprint and track multiple airborne targets for mission analysis purposes. The system will be able to intercept a range of radio frequency emissions like radar, navigational, communication or electronic countermeasure signals. The various components of the project will be networked via SATCOM links. Additional DRDO EU projects delivered to the Indian Air Force have included the COIN A and COIN B SIGINT stations. DRDO and Bell developed ELINT equipment for the Indian Air Force, installed on the services Boeing 737s and Hawker Siddeley Avro aircraft. DRDO has also developed a radar fingerprinting system for the IAF and the Navy. Another high-accuracy ESM system is being developed by the DRDO for the AEW&C project. The Indian Air Force's AEW&C systems will also include a comprehensive ESM suite, capable of picking up both radars as well as conducting communications intelligence. Topic radars The DRDO has steadily increased its radar development. The result has been substantial progress in India's ability to design and manufacture high-power radar systems with locally sourced components and systems. This began with the development of short-range 2D systems Indra-1 and has now extended to high-power 3D systems like LRTR intended for strategic purposes. Several other projects span the gamut of radar applications, from airborne surveillance AEW and C, to fire control radars land-based and airborne. A list of the tactical programs is as follows. 
Topic Army Multifunction Phased Array Radar and 3D Surveillance Radar for Akash Missile Weapon System Regendra and 3D Car respectively. In production. Low Level Light Weight 2D Radar for Mountainous Terrain Air Defense Barani. In production. Low Level Light Weight 3D Radar for Mountainous Terrain Air Defense Barani MK2. In production. 3D Tactical Control Radar for Air Defense 3D TCR. In production. 4D Active Aperture Array Tactical Control Radar for Air Defense 4D TCR. In development. Short Range Battlefield Surveillance Radar 2D BFSR Senior. In production. Weapon Locating Radar 3D WLR. In production. 3D Atulia ADFCR Air Defense Fire Control Radar. In development. Multi-Mission Radar MMSR. Project cancelled and subsumed into QRSAM Quick Reaction SAM program. FOPEN Radar. In development. Through Wall Detection Radar. In development. Ground Penetration Radar. In development. Topic Air Force Multifunction Phased Array Radar and 3D Surveillance Radar for Akash Missile Weapon System Regendra and 3D Car respectively. In production. Active Phased Array Radar for AEW and C. In production. Low-level 2D air defense radar Indra 2. Production closed and items delivered. 3D low-level lightweight radar Aslesha. In production. 3D low-level lightweight radar for mountains Aslesha MK2. In development. 3D medium-range surveillance radar for air defense Rahini derivative of 3D car 4D active array medium power radar for AD role Arudra. In production. 4D Active Array Low Level Transportable Radar for AD Roll Ashwini. In production. 4D Active Array High Power Radar for AD Roll. In development. 4D Active Array for AWACS India Project. In development. 3D Active Array Multi-Function Radar for BMD Roll MFCR. In production. 3D Active Array Long Range Tracking Radar LRTR for BMD Roll. In production. 4D Active Array Very Long Range Tracking Radar for BMD Roll VLRTR. In development. Airborne Electronically Scanned Array Radar for Tejas Mark 1A and Tejas MK2 UTOM. In development. Ground Controlled Interception SAR for UAVs <laughs> Navy Maritime Patrol Radar for Fixed and Rotary Wing Aircraft superseded by more advanced system, the XV-2004 Maritime Patrol Radar with RS and ISAR XV-2004 3D Medium Range Surveillance Radar for ASW Corvettes. In production. Multifunction Phased Array Radar for Air Defense Ship. In development. Maritime Patrol Airborne Radar for UAV. In development. Coastal Surveillance Radar CSR. In production, more details on the DRDOs productionized as well as production-ready radar systems is as follows Indra series of 2D radars meant for Army and Air Force use. This was the first high-power radar developed by the DRDO, with the Indra the first radar for the Indian Army, followed by Indra Pulse Compression PC version for the Indian Air Force, also known as the Indra II, which is a low-level radar to search and track low-flying cruise missiles, helicopters and aircraft. These are 2D radars which provide range and azimuth information and are meant to be used as gap fillers. The Indra II PC has pulse compression providing improved range resolution. The series are used both by the Indian Air Force and the Indian Army. Rajendra Fire Control Radar for the Akash SAM, the Rajendra is stated to be ready. However, it can be expected that further iterative improvements will be made. The Rajendra is a high-power passive electronically scanned array radar PESA, with the ability able to guide up to 12 Akash SAMs against aircraft flying at low to medium altitudes. The Regendra has a detection range of 80 km with 18 km high coverage against small fighter-sized targets and is able to track 64 targets, engaging four simultaneously, with up to three missiles per target. The Regendra features a fully digital high-speed signal processing system with adaptive moving target indicator, coherent signal processing, FFTs and variable pulse repetition frequency. 
The entire PESA antenna array can swivel 360 degrees on a rotating platform. This allows the radar antenna to be rapidly repositioned and even conduct all-round surveillance. Central Acquisition Radar, a state-of-the-art planar array S-band radar operating on the stacked beam principle. With a range of 180 km, it can track while scan 200 fighter-sized targets. Its systems are integrated on high mobility, locally built Tatra trucks for the Army and Air Force, however it is meant to be used by all three services. Initially developed for the long-running Akash SAM system, seven were ordered by the Indian Air Force for their radar modernization program and two of another variant were ordered by the Indian Navy for their P-28 Corvettes. The car has been a significant success for radar development in India, with its state-of-the-art signal processing hardware. The Rahini is the IAF-specific variant while the Ravathi is the Indian Navy-specific variant. The Rahini has a more advanced Indian developed antenna in terms of power handling and beamforming technology while the Ravathi adds two axis stabilization for operation in naval conditions, as well as extra naval modes. BFSR Senior, a 2D short-range battle field surveillance radar, meant to be manportable. Designed and developed by LRDE, the project was a systematic example of concurrent engineering, with the production agency involved through the design and development stage. This enabled the design to be brought into production quickly. The radar continues to progress further in terms of integration, with newer variants being integrated with thermal imagers for visually tracking targets detected by the radar. Up to 10 BFSR Senior can be networked together for network-centric operation. It is in use with the Indian Army and the BSF as well as export customers. Supervision 2000, an airborne 3D naval surveillance radar, meant for helicopters and light transport aircraft. This program was subsequently superseded by the advanced XV-2004 which offered a more sophisticated architecture able to handle SAR and ISAR modes. The SV-2000 is a lightweight, high-performance, slotted array radar operating in the X-band. It can detect sea surface targets such as a periscope or a vessel against heavy clutter and can also be used for navigation, weather mapping and beacon detection. The radar can detect a large vessel at over 100 nautical miles 370 kilometers. It is currently under modification to be fitted to the advanced light helicopter and the Navy's Do 228s. Variants can be fitted to the Navy's Ka 25s as well. A more advanced variant of the supervision, known as the XV-2004 is now in trials and features an ISAR, SAR capability intended for the Indian Navy's helicopter fleet. Swordfish Long Range Tracking Radar, a 3D AESA was developed with assistance from ELTA of Israel and is similar to ELTA's proven Green Pine Long Range Active Array Radar. The DRDO developed the signal processing and software for tracking high-speed ballistic missile targets as well as introduced more ruggedization. The radar uses mostly Indian-designed and manufactured components such as its critical high-power, L-band transmit-receive modules and other enabling technologies necessary for active phased array radars. The LRTR can track 200 targets and has a range of above 500 km. It can detect intermediate-range ballistic missile. The LRTR would be amongst the key elements of the Indian Ballistic Missile Defense Program. DRDO would provide the technology to private and public manufacturers to make these high-power systems. 3D Multi-Function Control Radar MFCR was developed as part of the Indian Anti-Ballistic Missile Program in cooperation with Thales of France. The MFCR is an active phased array radar and complements the Swordfish Long Range Tracking Radar, for intercepting ballistic missiles. The MFCR will also serve as the fire control radar for the AAD second tier missile system of the ABM program. The AAD has a supplementary role against aircraft as well and can engage missiles and aircraft up to an altitude of 30 km. The MFCR fills out the final part of the DRDO's radar development spectrum, and allows India to manufacture long-range 3D radars that can act as the nodes of an air defense ground environment system. 2D Low Level Lightweight Radar LLLWR for the Indian Army, known as the Barani, which requires many of these units for gap filling in mountainous terrain and has been ordered into production after clearing Indian Army trials. The Indian Air Force will also acquire a more advanced unit, called the Aslisha. 
The LLLWR is a 2D radar with a range of 40 km against a 2 square meter target, intended as a gap filler to plug detection gaps versus low level aircraft in an integrated air defense ground network. The LLLWR makes use of Indra 2 technology, namely a similar antenna array, but has roughly half the range and is much smaller and a far more portable unit. The LLLWR can track while scan 100 targets and provide details about their speed, azimuth and range to the operator. The LLLWR makes use of the BFSR senior experience and many of the subsystem providers are the same. Multiple LLLWRs can be networked together. The LLLWR is meant to detect low-level intruders, and will alert Army Air Defense Fire Control Units to cue their weapon systems. 3D short range radar for the Indian Air Force ASLESHA The ASLESHA radars have a range of approximately 50 kilometers against small fighter sized targets and will be able to determine their range speed azimuth and height This radar will enable the Indian Air Force air defense units to accurately track low level intruders The radar is a semi active phased array with a 1 meter square aperture the DRDO was in discussions with the Indian Navy to mount these systems on small ships. Multi-mode radar, a 3D radar is a HAL project with DRDO's LRDE as a subsystem provider. This project to develop an advanced, lightweight multi-mode fire control radar for the LCA Tejas fighter had faced challenges and was delayed and finally superseded by a program called the UTOM to develop an AESAFCR for the Tejas LCA. The MMR program was finally completed with ELTAS Israel assistance and became a hybrid system incorporating the original DRDO antenna, gimbal stabilization and Israeli backend. The multi-mode radar has range for detection of a small fighter target around 100 km, can track 10 targets, can engage 2 targets and uses lightweight system. Originally, DRDO developed an all-new combined signal and data processor had been developed, replacing the original separate units. The new unit is much more powerful and makes use of contemporary ADSP processors. The radar's critical hardware was also developed and validated. The software for the air-to-air -air mode has been developed considerably including search and track while scan in both look-up and look-down modes but air-to-ground modes were still being worked upon and proved problematic. The radar development was shown to be considerably more mature than previously thought but still faced significant delay and challenges. At Aero India 2009, it was revealed that the 3D MMR project has been superseded by the new 3D AESAFCR project led by LRDE. The MMR has been completed with ELTA Israel's assistance and now involved ELTA LM2032 technology for air to ground mapping and targeting. In order to simplify testing, the hybrid MMR basically became an Indian variant of the LM2032 with an Indian antenna and gimbal system, as ELTA pointed out, mixing and matching Indian hardware with Israeli software would in essence mean a new design with a significant time impact. The hybrid MMR has been tested, validated and will be supplied for the initial LCA Tejas fighters. DRDO has indigenized components and improved subsystems of various other licensed produced radars manufactured at Bell with the help of Bell scientists and other researchers. These improvements include new radar data processors for licensed produced signal radars as well as local radar assemblies replacing the earlier imported ones. Bell Weapon Locating Radar, a 3D radar successfully developed from the Rajendra Fire Control Radar for the Akash system, this radar called the SWATI, uses a passive electronically scanned array to detect multiple targets for fire correction and weapon location. The system has been developed and demonstrated to the Army and orders have been placed in terms of performance. The WLR is stated to be superior to the NTPQ-37, several of which were imported by India as an interim system while the WLR got ready. The Indian Army has ordered 28 of these units. 3D Tactical Control Radar, a new program, the TCR is an approximately 90 km ranged system for use by the Indian Army. A highly mobile unit, it's a variant of the 3D car unit and packaged into two as versus three units. The Indian Army has ordered many of the type for its air defense units. Apart from the above, the DRDO has also several other radar systems currently under development or in trials. These include 
Active Phased Array Radar, a 3D radar for fighters, a MMR follow on. The APAR project aims to field a fully fledged operational AESA fire control radar for the expected Mark II version of the light combat aircraft. This will be the second airborne AESA program after the AEWNC project and intends to transfer the success DRDO has achieved in the ground based radar segment to airborne systems. The overall airborne APAR program aims to prevent this technology gap from developing, with a broad-based program to bring DRDO up to par with international developers in airborne systems, both fire control and surveillance. As of 2016, the radar was still in development, with variants expected to be fielded on future IAF fighters like the MCA or Tejas Advanced Marks. Synthetic Aperture Radar and Inverse Synthetic Aperture Radar, the DRDO's LRDE is currently working on both SAR and ISAR radars for target detection and classification. These lightweight payloads are intended for both conventional fixed wing as well as UAV applications. Airborne Warning and Control, a new radar based on active electronically scanned array technology. The aim of the project is to develop in-house capability for high-power AEWNC systems, with the system covering the development of AS-band AESA array. The aircraft will also have data links to link fighters plus communicate with the IAF C3I infrastructure as well as a local SATCOM satellite communication system, along with other onboard ESM and COMINT systems. As of 2016, the system was in advanced trials and had achieved a TRL technical readiness level of 8 tenths with trials focusing on proving its self-protection equipment. Medium-range battlefield surveillance radar, in 2009, the LRDE DRDO noted that it was working on a long-range battlefield surveillance radar. It is possible that the BFSRLR project has replaced this earlier project and the Indian Army will utilize the Bell-built ELTA-designed BFSRMRs for medium-range surveillance while using the LRDE-designed systems for long-range surveillance. The 2D radar was to track ground targets and provide key intelligence to the Indian Army's artillery units, with the resultant information available on various tactical networks. As of 2016, this project was not active. 3D Medium Power Radar, a spin-off of the experience gained via the 3D MFCR project, the 3D Medium Power Radar project is intended to field a radar with a range of approximately 300 km against small fighter-sized targets. Intended for the Indian Air Force, the radar is an active phased array, and will be transportable. It will play a significant role being used as part of the nodes of the Indian Air Force's Enhanced Air Defense Ground Environment System. As of 2016, the radar was ready for IAF user trials and the IAF had ordered eight MPRs already. 3D Low-Level Transportable Radar, a new program, the LLTR is also called the Ashwini and is an approximately 200-150 km ranged system for use by the Indian Air Force. A highly mobile unit, it will also employ AESA technology, an open architecture to provide easy upgrades, and a variety of modes and capabilities depending on the software fit. The aim of the 3D medium power radar and LLTR is to offer systems which can be deployed in a variety of roles, from fire control to surveillance, and not be tied to one role alone. As of 2016, the LLTR program was in an advanced stage and expected to reach the trials phase 3D Army AD Fire Control Radar, a new program for the Indian Army. The Atulia FCR is intended to provide Army AD units with a compact fire control system for their armament. The Indian Army has a total requirement of over 60 FCRs. 3D Army Multi Mission Radar, a new program for the Indian Army. The mobile compact radar system is expected to be capable of both artillery detection and air defense missions. As of 2016, it was in an advanced stage of development, with basic design completed and realization of the prototype underway. Topic command and control software and decision-making tools Tactical tools for wargaming, Shatranj and Sangram for the Army, Sagar for the Navy and Air War software for the Air Force. All these systems are operational with the respective services. C3I Systems, DRDO, in cooperation with Bell and private industry has developed several critical C3I command, control, communications and intelligence systems for the armed services. Under the project Shakti, the Indian Army aims to spend $300 million to network all its artillery guns using the ACCS Artillery Command and Control System. 
Developed by DRDO's Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics, the system comprises computers and intelligent terminals connected as a wide area network. Its main subsystems are the Artillery Computer Center, Battery Computer, Remote Access Terminal and a Gun Display Unit. The ACCS is expected to improve the Army's artillery operations by a factor of 10 and allowing for more rapid and accurate firepower. The ACCS will also improve the ability of commanders to concentrate that firepower where it is most needed. The DRDO and Bell have also developed a battle management system for the Indian Army for its tanks and tactical units. Other programs in development for the Army include core level information and decision making software and tools, intended to link all units together for effective C3I. These systems are in production at DRDO's production partner, Bharat Electronics. These projects are being driven by the Indian Army Corps of Signals. The Indian Army is also moving towards extensive use of battlefield computers. DRDO has also delivered projects such as the Combat Net Radio for enhancing the Army's communication hardware. Data management and command and control systems for the Navy have been provided by the DRDO. The Navy is currently engaged in a naval networking project to network all its ships and shore establishments plus maritime patrol aircraft and sensors. Radar netting and multi-sensor fusion software for linking the Indian Air Force's network of radars and airbases which have been successfully operationalized. Other systems include sophisticated and highly complex mission planning and C-3I systems for missiles, such as the Agni and Prithvi ballistic missiles and the BrahMos cruise missile. These systems are common to all three services as all of them utilize different variants of these missiles. Simulators and training tools, DRDO and private industry have collaborated on manufacturing a range of simulators and training devices for the three services, from entry-level tests for prospective entrance to the Indian Air Force, to sophisticated simulators for fighter aircraft, transports and helicopters, tanks and gunnery devices. Topic. Computing technologies DRDO has worked extensively on high-speed computing given its ramifications for most of its defense projects. These include supercomputers for computational flow dynamics, to dedicated microprocessor designs manufactured in India for flight controllers and the like, to high-speed computing boards built around commercial off-the-shelf components, similar to the latest trends in the defense industry. Supercomputing, DRDO's Anurag developed the PACE plus supercomputer for strategic purposes for supporting its various programs. The initial version, as detailed in 1995, had the following specifications. The system delivered a sustained performance of more than 960 M flops million floating operations per second for computational fluid dynamics programs. PACE Plus included 32 advanced computing nodes, each with 64 megabytes MB of memory that can be expanded up to 256 megabytes and a powerful front-end processor which is a hyperspark with a speed of 66 90ths, 100 megahertz MHZ. Besides fluid dynamics, these high-speed computer systems were used in areas such as vision, medical imaging, signal processing, molecular modeling, neural networks and finite element analysis. The latest variant of the PACE series is the PACE++, a 128-node parallel processing system. With a front-end processor, it has a distributed memory and message passing system. Under Project Chitra, the DRDO is implementing a system with a computational speed of 2 to 3 teraflops utilizing commercial off-the-shelf components and the open-source Linux operating system. Processors and other critical items, DRDO has developed a range of processors and application-specific integrated circuits for its critical projects. Many of these systems are modular, in the sense that they can be reused across different projects. These include Pythagoras Processor to convert Cartesian to polar coordinates, ANUCO, a floating-point coprocessor and several others, including the Anupama 32-bit processor, which is being used in several DRDO projects. Electronic components, one of the endeavors undertaken by the DRDO has been to create a substantial local design and development capability within India, both in the private and public sectors. This policy has led to several hard-to-obtain or otherwise denied items, being designed and manufactured in India. 
These include components such as radar subsystems product-specific traveling wave tubes to components necessary for electronic warfare and other cutting-edge projects. Today, there are a range of firms across India, which design and manufacture key components for DRDO, allowing it to source locally for quite a substantial chunk of its procurement. The DRDO has also endeavoured to use COTS commercial off -the -shelf processors and technology, and follow open architecture standards, wherever possible, in order to pre-empt obsolescence issues and follow industry practice. One significant example is the development of an open architecture computer for the light combat aircraft, based on the PO-RPC architecture and VME-64 standard. The earlier mission computer utilizing Intel 486 DX chips has already seen success, with variants being present on the Su-30 MKI, Jaguar and MiG-27 upgrades for the Indian Air Force. Topic Laser Science and Technology Center LASTEC DRDO is working on a slew of directed energy weapons DUES. LASTEC has identified DUES, along with space security, cybersecurity and hypersonic vehicles as focus areas in the next 15 years. The aim is to develop laser-based weapons, deployed on airborne as well as seaborne platforms, which can intercept missiles soon after they are launched towards India in the boost phase itself. These will be part of the ballistic missile defense system being currently developed by DRDO. LASTEC is developing a 25 kW laser system to hit a missile during its terminal phase at a distance of 5 to 7 km. LASTEC is also working on a vehicle mounted gas dynamic laser based DO system, under Project Aditya, which should be ready in three years. Project Aditya is a technology demonstrator to prove beam control technology. Ultimately, solid-state lasers would be used. LASTEC projects include, non-lethal systems, handheld laser dazzler to disorient adversaries, without collateral damage. 50-meter range. Status, ready. Crowd control dazzlers mounted on vehicles to dispel rioting mobs. 250-meter range. Status, will take two more years. Laser-based ordnance disposal system, which can be used to neutralize IEDs and other explosives from a distance. Status, trials begin in 18 months, lethal systems, air defense dazzlers to take on enemy aircraft and helicopters at range of 10 km. Status, will take two more years. 25 kW laser systems to destroy missiles during their terminal phase at range of 5 to 7 km. Status, will take five more years. At least 100 kW solid-state laser systems, mounted on aircraft and ships, to destroy missiles in their boost phase itself. Status, will take a decade. Topic combat vehicles and engineering Topic. Tanks and armored vehicles Ajaya upgrade invincible, upgrade for the T-72 fleet, incorporating a mix of locally made and imported subsystems. 250 have been ordered. Local systems include the DRDO developed ERA, a DRDO developed laser warning system and combat net radio, the Bharat Electronics Limited advanced land navigation system consisting of fiber optic gyros and GPS, NBC protection and DRDO's fire detection and suppression system amongst other items. Imported systems include a compact thermal imager and fire control system and a new 1000 horsepower engine. Anti-tank ammunition, DRDO developed the FSAPDS for the 125mm caliber, meant for India's T-72 tanks, the 120mm FSAPDS and HESH rounds for the Arjun tank and 105mm FSAPDS rounds for the Army's Vijayanta and T-55 tanks. Significant amounts of 125mm anti-tank rounds manufactured by the Ordnance Factory Board were rejected. The problems were traced to improper packaging of the charges by the OFB, leading to propellant leakage during storage at high temperatures. The locally developed rounds were rectified and requalified. Production of these local rounds was then restarted. Since 2001, over 130,000 rounds have been manufactured by the OFB. The DRDO said in 2005 that it had developed a MK2 version of the 125mm round, with higher power propellant for greater penetration. In parallel, the OFB announced in 2006 that it was also manufacturing 125mm EMI rounds. 
It is believed that this might assist in improving the OFB's APFSDS manufacturing capability. These rounds and presumably the MK2 round and will be used by both the T-72 and T-90 formations in the Indian Army. Various armor technologies and associated subsystems from composite armor and explosive reactive armor to radios combat net radio with frequency hopping and encryption and battle management systems. Fire control systems are currently in production at Bell for the Argent tanks. The first batch in production have a hybrid SAGAM DRDO system, with SAGAM sites and local fire control computer. Argent tank, the penultimate design was accepted by the Indian Army and is now in series production at HVF Avidai. The Argent follows a template similar to the tanks developed by Western nations, with containerized ammunition storage, with blast-off panels, heavy composite armor, a 120mm gun rifled as compared to smoothbore on most other tanks, a modern FCS with high hit probability and a 1,400 horsepower 1, engine and a four-man crew. Originally designed in response to a possible Pakistani acquisition of the M1 Abrams, the project fell into disfavor once it became clear that Pakistan was instead standardizing on cheaper and less capable T-type tanks. In such a milieu, acquiring the Arjun in huge numbers is simply unnecessary for the Indian Army, given the additional logistic costs of standardizing on an entirely new type. The Indian Army ordered 124 units in 2000 and an additional 124 units in 2010 and MK2 version is already developed and ordered. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Modification of BMP2 series. India license manufactures the BMP2 with local components. The vehicle has been used as the basis for several locally designed modifications, ranging from missile launchers to engineering support vehicles. The DRDO and its various labs have been instrumental in developing these mission-specific variants for the Indian Army. Armored Engineering Reconnaissance Vehicle for enabling the combat engineers to acquire and record terrain survey data. The instruments mounted on the amphibious vehicle are capable of measuring width of obstacle, bed profile, water depth and bearing capacity of soil of the obstacle in real time which are helpful in taking decisions regarding laying of tracks or building of bridges. Armored amphibious dozer with amphibious capability for earth-moving operations in different terrain for preparation of bridging sites, clearing obstacles and debris and to fill craters. Self-recovery of the vehicle is also a built-in feature using a rocket-propelled anchor. Carrier mortar tract, designed to mount and fire an 81mm mortar from within vehicle. Capacity to fire from 40 degrees to 85 degrees and traverse 24 degrees on either side, 108 rounds of mortar ammunition stowed. Armored ambulance based on the BMP-2 vehicle. NBC Reconnaissance Vehicle, this variant has instrumentation for determining NBC contamination, as well as bringing back samples. The vehicle includes a plow for scooping up soil samples, to instrumentation such as a radiation dosimeter amongst other key items. Other engineering vehicles Bridge Layer Tank, claimed by DRDO to be the amongst the best bridging systems available on a medium-class tank. It has an option to carry a 20-meter or 22-meter Class 70 MLC bridge, which can be negotiated by all tanks in service with Indian Army. Amphibious floating bridge and ferry system intended for transporting heavy armor, troops and engineering equipment across large and deep water obstacles. The vehicle can convert to a fully decked bridge configuration of 28.4 meters in length in 9 minutes. Two more vehicles can be joined in tandem to form a floating bridge of 105 meters in length in 30 minutes. The bridge superstructure is integrated with floats to provide stability and additional buoyancy. The vehicle is also capable of retracting its wheels for use as a grounded bridge, ramp for high banks. Arjun Bridge Layer Tank, the BLT Arjun is an all-new design with a scissor-type bridge laying method, which helps it avoid detection from afar. It uses the chassis of the Arjun tank and can take higher weights than the BLT-72. Sarvatra Bridge Layer, the bridge can be deployed over water and land obstacles to provide 75 meters of bridge length for battle tanks, supply convoys and troops. The system consists of a light aluminum alloy scissors bridge and was approved for production in March 2000 trials. 
One complete set of the multi-span mobile bridging system includes five truck-mounted units with a bridge span of 15 meters each. The system is designed to take the weight of the Arjun MBT, by far the heaviest vehicle in the Army's inventory. Microprocessor-based control system reduces the number of personnel required to deploy and operationalize the bridge. The bridging equipment is carried on a Tatra Kolos chassis and the system is built by Bharat Earth Movers Limited Mobile decontamination system, with the NBC aspect of the battlefield in mind, the DRDO developed a Tatra vehicle-based mobile decontamination system for decontamination of personnel, clothing, equipment, vehicles and terrain during war. The main sub-systems of mobile decontamination system are, pre-wash, chemical wash and post-wash systems respectively. The pre-wash system consists of a 3,000-liter stainless steel water tank and a fast suction pump. A high-pressure jet with a capacity of 3,400 L per hour and a low-pressure jet with a capacity of 900 L per hour and 1,600 L per hour are included. The chemical wash system is capable of mixing two powders and two liquids with variable feed rates and has a 5 liter per minute slurry emulsion flow rate. The post-wash system consists of a high-pressure hot water jet, a hot water shower for personnel and provision of steam for decontamination of clothing. The decontamination systems have been introduced into the services. The system is under production for the Army at DRDO's partnering firms, with the DRDO itself manufacturing the pilot batch. Remotely operated vehicle ROV, DRDO docks, a tracked robotic vehicle with staircase climbing ability has been developed and is particularly intended for remote explosion of explosive devices. The ROV is carried in a specially designed carrier vehicle with additional armament and firing ports. The ROV itself is fairly sophisticated, with provision to carry various optronic payloads, an articulated gripper to pick up objects, an ability to traverse difficult terrain including staircases, as well as an integral waterjet projector to blow up explosive packages. It was formally inducted into Indian Army's Corps of Engineers on 19 December 2011. The Indian Army placed a total order of 20 ROVs and six of them are now operational with Army. Each unit cost about 9 million rupees. DRDO is developing robotic soldiers and mules capable of carrying luggage up to 400 kilograms at high altitudes. Topic in development. Abhay IFV Fearless, an IFV design in prototype form. This IFV will have a 40 mm gun based on the proven Bofors L70 armor piercing and explosive rounds, a fire control system derived from the Arjun MBT project with a thermal imager, all electric turret and gun stabilization, a locally designed flame launcher for locally manufactured Concours M anti tank missiles, and an Indian diesel engine. The armor will be lightweight composite. Tank X, a project to mount Arjun's turret on a T-72 chassis to combine high fire power with a low silhouette. This is a DRDO initiative and not a specific army demand. Reports emerged in 2008 that the Indian Army has rejected the tank with two prototypes built. Armored vehicle for paramilitary forces, a wheeled armored vehicle, the AVP was displayed at DEFEXP 02006. The AVP has armored glass windows and firing ports, as well as provision for heavier caliber small arms, and crowd control equipment. Currently at prototype stage. Mining and demining equipment, the self-propelled mine barrier has been developed by the DRDO for a requirement projected by the Indian Army. It is an automated mine laying system developed on a high mobility vehicle and is currently in trials. The counter mine flail, is a vehicle built upon the T-72 chassis and has a series of fast-moving flails to destroy mines. A prototype has been displayed. <laughs> <laughs> Naval research and development <laughs> Sonars DRDO, Bell and the Indian Navy have developed and productionized a range of sonars and related systems for the Indian Navy's frontline combat ships. These include APSOH Advanced Panoramic Sonar Hull Mounted HUMVAD Hull Mounted Variable Depth Sonar 
HUMSA follow on to the APSOH series, the acronym HUMSA stands for Hull Mounted Sonar Array. Nagan Towed Array Sonar Panchendria Submarine Sonar and Fire Control System. Other sonars such as the Airborne Sonar Mahir are in trials, whilst work is proceeding apace on a new generation of sonars. Sonars may be considered one of DRDO's most successful achievements as the Indian Navy's most powerful ships rely on DRDO-made sonars. The standard fit for a front-line naval ship would include the HUMSA Ng hull-mounted sonar and the Nagan towed array sonar. The Mahir is a dunking sonar meant for use by the naval ALH, working in conjunction with its tadpole sonabuoy. The Panchendria is in production for the Kilo-class submarine upgrades. Topic. Torpedoes DRDO is currently engaged in developing multiple torpedo designs. These include a lightweight torpedo that has been accepted by the Navy and cleared for production. Topic. Under development Advanced Light Torpedo Shaina is an advanced experimental torpedo developed by the Naval Scientific and Technological Laboratory NSTL, a DRDO wing. Development was started in 1990. NSTL Advanced Lightweight Torpedo NSTL Varanastra Heavy Weight Torpedo, the heavy weight wire guided torpedo called Varanastra and Thakshak Thermal Torpedo are suitable for use against both ships and submarines. The electrically powered Varanastra is stated to be in production. The DRDO also developed and productionized a microprocessor controlled triple tube torpedo launcher for the Indian Navy as well as a towed torpedo decoy. Topic: Other projects. These have included indigenization of various components for instance, adsorbent material for submarines, radar components, naval ship signature reduction efforts and materials technology. DRDO has played a significant role in the development of warship-grade steel in India and its productionization. DRDO has also assisted private industry in developing EU trainers, ship simulators for training and health monitoring systems for onboard equipment. Other equipment for the Navy includes underwater telephone sets, and VLF communication equipment, for the Navy's submarines. DRDO's IRDE has also developed optronic fire control systems for the Navy's and the Coast Guard's ships. <laughs> Information command and control systems DRDO's labs have been part of projects to develop sophisticated command and control systems for the Navy, such as the EMCCA Equipment Modular for Command and Control Application which ties together various sensors and data systems. The EMCCA system gives commanders on the ship a consolidated tactical picture and adds to the ship's maritime combat power. DRDO labs are also engaged in supporting the Navy's ambitious Naval Enterprise Wide Networking System, a program to link all naval assets together via datalinks for sharing tactical information. Topic: <laughs> Mines and Targets. Three kinds of mines, processor-based mine, moored mine and processor-based exercise mine are in production for the Navy. Targets developed for the Navy include a static target called the versatile acoustic target and a mobile target called the programmable deep mobile target PDMT. Topic: In development a submarine escape set, used by crew to escape from abandoned submarines. The set consists of breathing apparatus and hydro suit. New generation sonars and EU equipment. Heavyweight torpedoes, underwater remotely operated vehicles, improved signature reduction technology for naval applications. Missile systems Topic. Integrated Guided Missile Development Program 
The IGMDP was launched by the Indian government to develop the ability to develop and design a missile locally, and manufacture a range of missile systems for the three defence services. The programme has seen significant success in its two most important constituents, the Agni missiles and the Prithvi missiles, while two other programmes, the Akash SAM and the anti tank NAG missile, have seen significant orders. The Trishal missile, a program to develop a tri service short range SAM, faced persistent problems throughout its development and was shut down in 2007. <laughs> Prithvi ballistic missiles the Prithvi Earth missiles are a range of SRBMs produced for the Indian Air Force and Army. A variant for the Navy has been deployed on Sukanya class patrol vessel. Another submarine launched variant known as the K15 is under development. The Prithvi is an extremely accurate liquid fueled missile with a range of up to 350 kilometers. While relatively inexpensive and accurate with a good payload, its logistics footprint is high on account of it being liquid fueled. Agni ballistic missiles The Agni fire ballistic missiles are a range of MRBMs, IRBMs, ICBMs meant for long-range deterrence. The Agni-3 is the newest version which is getting inducted into the armed forces and has range of up to 3,500 km miles. The Agni-I and Agni-2 have been productionized, although exact numbers remain classified. First trials of the Agni-3 saw problems and the missile test did not meet its objectives. The second test was successful. Further tests of the Agni-3 are planned to validate the missile and its subsystems, which include new propellant and guidance systems, a new re-entry vehicle and other improvements. The Agni-V missile is an intercontinental ballistic missile meant for long-range deterrence. The Agni-V is the newest version and has the longest range of up to 5,000 to 6,000 km. Agni V would also carry multiple independently targetable re entry vehicle payloads and will have countermeasures against anti ballistic missile systems. It was successfully test fired on 19 April 2012. The missile will utilize a canister and will be launched from it. 60% of the missile will be similar to the Agni 3 missile. Advanced technologies like ring laser gyroscope and accelerometer will be used in the new missile. DRDO plans to develop reusable missiles which will be a combination of ballistic and cruise missile technology. During an interview in August 24, 2014, the DRDO chief disclosed the plans of DRDO designing a long-range ballistic anti-ship missile. Akash-SAM the Akash Sky or Ether is a medium-range surface-to-air missile system consisting of the command guidance ramjet-powered Akash along with the dedicated service-specific launchers, battery control radar the Regendra Block 3, a central acquisition radar, battery and group control centers. The Akash project has yielded spin-offs like the central acquisition radar and weapon locating radar. The Akash system cleared its user trials with the Indian Air Force in 2007. The user trials had the Akash intercept flying targets at ITR, Chandipur. The Akash missile successfully hit its targets in all of the tests. The Indian Air Force has since been satisfied with the performance of the missile and ordered two squadrons of the Akash, with a squadron having eight launchers. The Indian Air Force placed an order for an additional six squadrons of the Akash SAM in 2010, with an order of 750 missiles, 125 per squadron. This order makes a total of a 1,000 Akash SAMs on order for the Indian Air Force for eight squadrons. In June 2010, the Defence Acquisition Council placed an order of the Akash missile system, valued at 12,500 crore rupees $1.7 billion. Bharat Dynamics Limited will be the system integrator and nodal production agency for the Akash Army variant. Trishal SAM. The Trishal Trident is a short-range surface-to-air missile developed by India. It was developed by Defence Research and Development Organisation as a part of the Integrated Guided Missile Development Programme. It can also be used as an anti-sea skimmer from a ship against low-flying attacking missiles. Trishal has a range of 9 km 5.6 miles. 
It is powered by a dual-thrust propulsion stage using high-energy solid propellant. Trishul weighs 130 kilograms (290 pounds) and is capable of carrying a 15 kilograms (33 pounds) warhead. The Trishul missile project was commissioned in 1983 as a part of Integrated Guided Missile Development Program. The project was to be completed by 1992, and the missile would be fitted to Brahmaputra class frigates as an anti-sea skimmer. In 1985, Trishul made its first unguided flight from Satish Dhawan Space Center, Sriharikota. The missile made its first full-range guided flight in 1989. In 1992, the missile was successfully tested against a target and reached Mach 2 speed. In 1997, the associated radar systems for detecting the incoming sea skimmer were operational. The launch system was developed by Bharat Dynamics Limited in 1998. In 2003, Government of India announced that the missile will be a technology demonstrator and delinked it from other projects. The missile was successfully test fired in 2005. The development cost of the program was 2.826 billion rupees, 39 million dollars, and the defense minister announced the official closure of the program in 2008. Topic: <laughs> Nag anti-tank missile the NAG anti-tank missile Cobra is a guided missile system intended for the Indian Air Force and the Indian Army. The Army will deploy the NAG on ground-based launchers and from helicopters, whereas the Air Force will rely on helicopter-based units. The NAG has an imaging infrared IIR seeker and has a top and direct attack capability, with a tandem warhead. The Army's land missile carrier and launcher, known as the Namika, carries several ready-to-use NAG missiles within and four NAG missiles in an extendable launcher above the turret. The Namika has its own FLIR-based sighting and fire control unit. The Air Force and Army will also use their Advanced Light Helicopters ALH, HAL Dhruv, and the HAL Light Combat Helicopter LHC, as NAG carriers. The ALHs will be equipped with IRDE DRDO developed HELITIS Heliborne Imaging and Targeting Systems with a combination of a FLIR and laser range finder in a stabilized turret for target acquisition and designation. The thermal imager is likely to be imported, but the gimbaled turret, stabilization, laser range finder and associated electronics have been designed in India and will be manufactured locally. The NAG ATGM is regarded as a highly capable missile, even though its development has been protracted, mainly due to the technological challenges of developing a state-of-the-art IIR sensor-equipped top attack missile. The NAG is still cheaper than most imported missiles in its category and is earmarked for the Army and Air Force. The NAG anti-tank guided missile was cleared for production in July 2009 and there are uncorroborated reports since that it may be purchased by Tanzania, Botswana and Morocco. The NAG will complement the existing Russian 9M113 Concours anti-tank guided missile and European missile Milan in Indian usage, both of which are manufactured under license by Bharat Dynamics Limited. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> BrahMos missile. Launched as a joint venture between India's DRDO and the Russian NPO, the BrahMos program aims at creating a range of missile systems derived from the Yakant missile system. Named the BrahMos, after the Brahmaputra and the Moskva rivers, the project has been highly successful. The Indian Navy has ordered the BrahMos naval version, both slant launched and vertically launched, for its ships. The Indian Army has ordered two regiments worth of land launched missiles for long range strike, and an air launched version is in development for the Indian Air Force's Su 30 MKIs and the Navy's Tu 142 long range aircraft. The DRDO has been responsible for the navigational systems on the BrahMos, aspects of its propulsion, airframe and seeker, plus its fire control systems, mobile command posts and transporter erector launcher. The hypersonic BrahMos II is to be developed as a follow-on to the original BrahMos. The missile would fly at speeds of 5 to 7 Mach. BrahMos I Block III an upgraded version of the 290 km range BrahMos supersonic cruise missile was successfully test fired by India on 2 December 2010 from Integrated Test Range at Chandipur off the Orissa coast. 
Block 3 version of BrahMos with advanced guidance and upgraded software, incorporating high maneuvers at multiple points and steep dive from high altitude was flight tested successfully from Launch Complex 3 of ITR. Its director SP Dash said after the test fire from a mobile launcher at 1,100 hours. The 8.4 m missile which can fly at 2.8 times the speed of sound is capable of carrying conventional warheads of up to 300 kg for a range of 290 km. It can effectively engage ground targets from an altitude as low as 10 m for surgical strikes at terror training camps across the border without causing collateral damage. BrahMos is capable of being launched from multiple platforms like submarine, ship, aircraft and land-based mobile autonomous launchers the Block 3 BrahMos has the capability of scaling mountain terrain and can play a vital role in precision strike in the Northern Territories. The advanced cruise missile can fly close to the rough geographies and kill the target a five-year development timeframe is anticipated. <laughs> Shoria The Shoria missile Valor is a canister-launched hypersonic surface-to-surface -surface tactical missile developed by the Indian Defence Research and Development Organisation for use by the Indian Armed Forces. Similar to the BrahMos, Shoria is stored in composite canisters, which makes it much easier to store for long periods without maintenance as well as to handle and transport. It also houses the gas generator to eject the missile from the canister before its solid propellant motors take over to hurl it at the intended target. Shoria missiles can remain hidden or camouflaged in underground silos from enemy surveillance or satellites till they are fired from the special storage cum launch canisters. The Shoria system will require some more tests before it becomes fully operational in 2-3 years. Moreover, defense scientists say the high-speed, two-stage Shoria has high maneuverability which also makes it less vulnerable to existing anti-missile defense systems. It can be easily transported by road. The missile, encased in a canister, is mounted on a single vehicle, which has only a driver's cabin, and the vehicle itself is the launch platform. This single vehicle solution reduces its signature, it cannot be easily detected by satellites, and makes its deployment easy. The gas generator, located at the bottom of the canister produces high-pressure gas, which expands and ejects the missile from the tube. The centerpiece of a host of new technologies incorporated in Shoria is its Ring Laser Gyroscope RLG and Accelerometer. The indigenous Ring Laser Gyroscope, a sophisticated navigation and guidance system developed by the Research Center Imarat RCI based in Hyderabad is a highly classified technology. In test flights the RLG functioned exceptionally well, the RLG monitors the missile's position in space when it is flying. The missile's onboard computer will use this information and compare it with the desired position. Based on the difference between the missile's actual and desired positions, the computer will decide the optimum path and the actuators will command the missile to fly in its desired, targeted position. The third test of the RLG was successful on 24 September 2011, reaching a speed of 7.5 Mach. It is now ready for production. Sagarika The K-15 Sagarika is a nuclear-capable submarine launched ballistic missile belonging to the K-missile family with a range of 750 km 466 miles. Sagarika can carry a payload of up to 500 kg 1,102 pounds. Sagarika was developed at the DRDO's missile complex in Hyderabad. This missile will form part of the triad in India's nuclear deterrence, and will provide retaliatory nuclear strike capability. The development of this missile under the title Project K-15 started in 1991. The Indian government first confirmed Sagarika's development seven years later 1998, when the then Defence Minister, George Fernandez, announced it during a press conference. The development of the underwater missile launcher, known as Project 420 P420, was completed in 2001 and handed over to the Indian Navy for trials. The missile was successfully test-fired six times, and tested to its full range up to three times. The test of missile from a submerged pontoon was conducted in February 2008. 
Sagarika is being integrated with India's nuclear-powered Arahant class submarines that began sea trials on the 26th of July 2009. Topic: <laughs> Sudarshan. India's first laser-guided bomb, Sudarshan, is the latest weapon system developed indigenously to occupy the niche of a precision delivery mechanism. It can be fitted to a 1,000-pound gravity bomb and can guide it to the target using lasers with a SEP circular error probability of 10 meters. Topic DRDO glide bombs Garuthma and Garuda are DRDO's 1,000 kg glide bombs. These are India's first indigenously designed glide bomb with a range of 30 km Garuda to 100 km Garuthma. Topic. Prahar missile Prahar is a solid-fueled surface-to-surface guided short-range tactical ballistic missile developed by DRDO of India. It would be equipped with omnidirectional warheads and could be used for hitting both tactical and strategic targets. It has a range of about 150 km. It was test fired successfully on the 21st of July 2011 from the Integrated Test Range ITR at Chandipur. Topic. Plans Topic Long Range SAM India and Israel have worked out an agreement to develop and produce the Long Range Barak 8 air defense system for both the Indian and the Israeli militaries. The initial co development funding is about $350 million, of which IAI will finance 50%. The venture is a tripartite one, between the DRDO, the Indian Navy, and the IAI. The missile is referred to as the LRSAM in Indian government literature, and will have a range of 72 kilometers 45 miles. Israel Aircraft Industries refers to the system as Barak 8. IAI states that the missile will have a dual pulse motor, is vertically launched and is able to engage both aircraft and sea skimming missiles. It has a fully active seeker, and the Barak 8 weapons system is capable of multiple simultaneous engagements. It will have a two-way datalink for midcourse update, as well as be able to integrate into larger C3I networks. The primary fire control sensor for the Naval Barak 8, LRSAM will be the Elta MF Star Naval AESA radar which Israel claims to be superior to many existing systems worldwide. The dual-pulse rocket motor for the SAM was developed by DRDO, and the prototypes were supplied to IAI for integration with IAI systems to develop the complete missile. The other variant of the LRSAM will be fielded by the Indian Air Force. Along with the Akash SAM, the LRSAM fills a longer range requirement and both types will complement each other. Each unit of the Mr. SAM would consist of a command and control center, with an acquisition radar, a guidance radar and three launchers with eight missiles each. A four-year, $300 million system design and development phase to develop unique system elements and an initial tranche of the land-based missiles is estimated. The radars, C-2 centers, TELs and missiles will be co-developed by Israel and India. In turn, IAI and its Israeli partners have agreed to transfer all relevant technologies and manufacturing capabilities to India allowing India to manufacture the LRSAM systems locally as well as support them. The Barak 8 Next Generation Long Range Surface to Air Missile LRSAM had its first test flight on 29 May 2010. Topic. Astra BVRAAM Astra is a 80 km 50 miles class, active radar homing air-to-air -air missile meant for beyond visual range missile combat. Several tests of the missile's basic propulsion and guidance have taken place from land-based launchers. Air-launched trials will follow thereafter. DRDO has developed an indigenous 7 kg lightweight rocket launcher for the Indian Army which will replace the 14 kg Carl Gustav Mark II launcher which is much heavier than the DRDO developed rocket launcher. The DRDO has made extensive use of composites in its construction, resulting in the reduced weight. <laughs> Anti-ballistic missile defense project Unveiled in 2006, the ABM project was a surprise to many observers. 
While DRDO had revealed some details about the project over the years, its progress had been marked by strict secrecy, and the project itself was unlisted, and not visible among DRDO's other programs. The ABM project has benefited from all the incremental improvements achieved by the DRDO and its associated industrial partners via the long-running and often contentious Akash missile and Trishal missile programs. However, it is a completely new program, with much larger scope and with predominantly new subsystems. The ABM project has two missiles, namely the AAD Advanced Air Defense and PAD Prithvi Air Defense missiles. The former is an endo-atmospheric interceptor of new design, which can intercept targets to a height of 30 km 19 miles. Whereas the latter is a modified Prithvi missile, dubbed the AXO Atmospheric Interceptor AXO, with a dedicated second-stage kill vehicle for ballistic missile interception, up to an altitude of 80 km 50 miles. Both these missiles are queued by an active phased array long-range tracking radar, similar to the Elta Greenpine but made with locally developed components, which include DRDO Develop Transmit, Receive Modules. The ABM system also makes use of a second radar, known as the Multi-Function Control Radar which assists the LRTR in classifying the target, and can also act as the fire control radar for the AAD missile. The MFCR, like the LRTR, is an active phased array system. The entire system was tested in November 2006, under the Prithvi Air Defense Exercise, when a prototype AXO missile, successfully intercepted another Prithvi missile at a height of 50 km 31 miles. This test was preceded by an electronic test, in which an actual target missile was launched, but the entire interceptor system was tested electronically, albeit no actual interceptor was launched. This test was successful in its entirety. The AAD missile was tested on December 2007 which successfully intercepted a modified Prithvi missile simulating the M9 and M11 class of ballistic missiles. Interception happened at an altitude of 15 km 9 miles. Topic GATET engine The Defense Research and Development Organization DRDO has launched a 100 crore rupees .9 million project in R&D in the area of gas turbines, a DRDO official said on April 2010. Under the initiative of DRDO's Aeronautics Research and Development Board, R&D projects, which need investment in the region of 50 lakh rupees $69,573 to 5 crore rupees $695,730, would be considered for funding. GTRE was the nodal agency to spearhead this venture, called GATET. Anti-satellite weapon After testing the over 5,000 km Agni-V missile, which went up to 600 km into space during its parabolic trajectory, the Defense Research and Development Organization DRDO now feels it can fashion deadly anti-satellite weapons in double quick time. Agni V gives you the boosting capability, and the kill vehicle, with advanced seekers, will be able to home into the target satellite, DRDO chief, VK Saraswat said. The Defense Ministry in 2010 had even drafted a 15 year technology perspective and roadmap, which held development of ASAT weapons for electronic or physical destruction of satellites in both LEO 2000 km altitude above Earth's surface and the higher geosynchronous orbit as a thrust area in its long-term integrated perspective plan under the management of DRDO. Consequently, defense scientists are focusing on space security to protect India's space assets from electronic or physical destruction. Another spin-off from Agni-V test is that the DRDO feels it can work towards launching mini-satellites for battlefield use if an adversary attacks the country's main satellites. Topic. Communication Centric Intelligence Satellite CCISAT. Communication Centric Intelligence Satellite is an advanced reconnaissance satellite, being developed by DRDO. It will be India's first officially declared spy satellite and according to ISRO it should be in the sky by 2014. This satellite will help Indian intelligence agencies to significantly boost surveillance of terror camps in neighbouring countries. See also 
Defense Research and Development Organization Portal Defense Institute of Advanced Technology Ordnance Factories Board Aeronautical Development Agency Hindustan Aeronautics Limited Bharat Electronics Limited